Hey guys, it's Mark here. I haven't done a video in a long time and I wanted to do a quick one because I haven't seen many uh, videos on YouTube about um, XJ or MJ coilover or air shock mounting. And this was, I don't want to say it was an easy way to do it, but it was a way to do it that you don't have to remove a bunch of unibody. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit of what I did here. Um, first of all, um, I'm shooting in this one-to-one -one format because it's the only one. I'm up close to the vehicle and I can't scooch back any further. So it's not the ideal format, but it's, it's going to work best for this. Um, basically what you do is you clean the unibody really well and then you plate the unibody all this bumper behind with this bumper mounts all this whole thing is plated in uh, 3 16 and you do it in small pieces uh, I didn't buy a kit I just uh, I bought four inch flat bar and plated the unibody and you got to be really careful when you're welding to the unibody you can't go um, can't go super hot you got to watch your heat and you also have to clean the unibody well and get all the coating the factory unibody, a lot of them come with some kind of aluminized coating or some kind of zinc coating or something that's on top of the steel but under the paint. And you have to clean that aluminized coating off before you weld to it. And you want to weld downhill and watch your heat and basically you will plate the unibody first. And then where the, where the, uh, the stock coil mounts you cut out, you trace around the, the outside of that and you cut out just where the coil mounts from the factory and that's going to be your opening where you poke up through with your mount. Then after it's plated, what you do is you figure out um, where your axle is. My axle scoots way far forward. I got everything ma masked off because I'm going to paint. Figure out where your axle is going to be and you can have your shocks leaned at a little bit of an angle forward or back or whatever. Um, mine are leaned back like this a little bit, like maybe uh, yeah, seven, eight degrees, something like that. This bend here, this is an inch and a half uh, 250 wall, and that bend, to do it this way, that bend is going to be about 50 degrees, uh, maybe 50, 52 degrees, um, and then you put your little, this is a, these are two inch, 250 walls you come off the unibody with those you get a good weld behind there just tack everything up when you're fitting all this and then um, they don't go straight up and down they're leaned out the, the tubing is leaned out some so you can see here what it actually looks like um, they're leaned out and then you got to figure out some kind of tab system for the top, which I went through a few different variations uh, before I actually got it. I actually ended up having some custom uh, brackets cut that, that made it work out perfectly because I couldn't find a tab that would give me the misalignment I needed without interfering. So once you get your hoop fit, everything tacked, um, these braces go in last because there's going to be a lot of pressure pushing up and in on these on this tubing. So you want to brace it. That's a quarter inch plate with an opening down here to let the water and mud come through when I pressure wash. Um, same thing here. It's harder to see, but there, there's a gusset on both sides. You want a big gusset to support that tube as much as possible. Um, the coilover reservoir. We'll mount there. Those are on. You can get those on eBay fairly cheap, and then use a uh, a hose clamp to secure the reservoir to there. And then I'm gonna. There's a two quarter inch t uh, custom brackets coming up off of the tubing, and then two side gussets that I uh, also got on eBay. And I'll show you the top what it looks like. The other side's already finished. I'll show you that when I'm, when we're all done. So that's what we're looking at. Um, that's, that's the shape of the gusset there. And everything's quarter inch. 
and I couldn't I wanted to put a connecting plate here to reinforce it more but that's where the uh, hose that's where the uh, reservoir hose comes through so I couldn't put anything there but it's it's fairly strong once you get everything fit and tacked guys these gussets will go on last you uh, you tack these on temporarily then you tack the tubing to those and get it at the exact angle that you want. Put some decent sized tacks once you get it perfect so that it doesn't move. Then you do these two upper inner brackets and these, these, these are last and then these are last. So once you get everything, because it's hard to weld in place, you never want to weld anything in place. You want to weld it on the workbench so you can move it around. So once you get everything tacked and you get everything fit and you check your angles and you check your shock, make sure it's gonna clear, make sure your spring doesn't rub back here, make sure there's no interference in here. Then you, cut, then you grind your tacks, cut your tacks off with the wafer disc and you can add these, these can go on last. That's not a big deal. But uh, then you take this whole assembly back to the workbench and you, uh, you weld it out so you can get really good burned in welds so nothing's gonna, you know, so you or you're confident in your welds because it's very hard to weld this stuff in place. Then you come back in, the only thing you have to do after it's fully welded out, the only thing you have to do is you have to do your weld around here, your weld around the backside here where it welds to the plating on the unibody. And then you gotta do your gussets and they just get a weld on the outside here. You don't gotta do a weld on the inside. I mean, you can, but it's difficult to get the stinger in there. Put your gussets in there, and you come up here, you put your gussets in here, and then you put these on last, and then that's it. Then you prep it, clean everything with acetone, and then you can spray it. So I do a layer of uh, black paint, flat black paint, or semi-gloss. Then after that, once that dries, I I'll do a layer of, uh, I'll do this heavy in a uh, bed liner, spray bed liner, and then I'll mist, I'll mist all this, oh sorry. I'll mist all this stuff lightly in bed liner. That's it. Let's talk about this real quick. This is the limiting strap tab. And then this is the bump stop mount. So you gotta have pads, obviously bump stop pads on your truss. Then you get, these are come from Amazon, they're cheap. Two different size uh, bump, bump stops here. So that's a big, That's I think that's a four inch or a five inch. I'm going to try that one, see how much up travel I get. Protecting the oil pan, of course. You don't want too much up travel. Then I have a shorter one here. So I'm going to see which ones I end up, once I take it out on the trail, I'm going to see which ones uh, work the best. So cheap bump stops. You don't got to get the fancy, you know, you're not a trophy truck racer. You don't have to spend the $350 on fancy bump stops. You can use rubber bump stops, just a trail rig. Um, but yeah, I'm just getting ready to paint this today. Got everything ma masked off. I'm gonna go over and show you the other side. We got Fox 2.0, 12 inch coilovers. That's what she looks like when it's all said and done. Uh, 12 inch 2.0 Foxes, dual rate. Uh, I have a Cherokee with a 5.3, or it's a Comanche, sorry. It's an 88 Comanche with a 5.3. Um, it's all the same. From the firewall forward, the Comanches are the same as the Cherokees, but underneath of the cab, the unibodies are quite a bit different. But um, yeah, I mean, you get it all painted up nice, let it sit and cure, and you get your stuff mounted. Got some uh, wide open design uh, limiting straps and AccuTune Fox shocks, and they set you up. They tell them what you have, and they'll guess the weight based on all their experience. And they sent me, the upper spring is 150 pound and the lower spring is a 250 pound. And I'll show you from a different angle here. So there's a slight uh, top to bottom lean. And then there's a slight um, front to back lean. And then your ride height is obviously adjusted with your preload rings at the top and that's it these are 12 inch coilovers and it leaves you with plenty of up travel I have about five inches of up travel 
and then you end up with about um, about seven inches of down travel and that's more than enough for the front of the Cherokee um, you don't want your drive shaft to bind that's the main uh, issue people think they buy they go out and buy 16 inch coilovers you can't use 16 inch coilovers unless you put the uh, unless you put the mounts way up here and that's that's too much so if you want to use 14s I'm sure 14s would work if you if you did your hoops a little bit taller but 12 inch coilovers are very common they're actually the second most common according to AccuTune the most common coilover is a 14 the second most common is a 12 then the third most common is a 16 so 12s are more than enough in the front and in the rear you can do 14s in the rear or you could probably even do 16s in the rear if you wanted to but I did 14s in the rear but um yeah I just wanted to show you the setup here I, th I think that's a Barnes uh, track bar mount and you got to plate everything for the track bar mount and all that and yeah it's a very good setup and if you're a Cherokee guy and you want to do you want to do the coilovers it's a lot of work um, Plating the unibody sucks, um, but the rest of it wasn't that bad. A lot of grinding, a lot of welding, but, you know, typical fabrication stuff. But All right, guys, those are the yokes. Those are the XMT Yokohamas in a 40 with a Pro Comp uh, Trilogy 75 Series beadlock. Very nice wheel. Um, this thing is about 95% complete. I'm doing uh, little interior stuff now. I got a bed liner once the weather breaks. It's starting to get nice outside, it's March. But um, got a bed liner the interior, paint the tubing, paint the cage, paint the hood, paint the fenders, paint the front bumper. Uh, fab, fab work's almost done. I have a front piece that goes onto here that's gonna be removable. So in case I ever have to pull the engine again from the front, I can unbolt it from there and pull everything out through the front. But uh, she's almost done. She's almost done. But yeah, just a Ford high pinion 60, 538 gears, reed knuckles, uh, East Coast gear supply, chromoly shafts in the front. Nothing crazy, but you know, basic one ton with upgrades. And looking forward to the springtime. So just wanted to run that by you, see what you think. But it's a uh, it's not not daunting of a task, but if you have uh, if you have some good fab skills and some good tools and a place to do it, no reason why you can't do this. Um, grind literally a grinder and a welder, and some know-how. You guys can you guys get your Cher Cherokee hooked up. But um, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye bye.